morning, 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 morning. This is a Monacy podcast. Code red, code red, who are code red? Here we are. Pick up your iPads, your cell phones, and have me and listen to Uncle the podcast. Watch out. If you're sitting down for this, or if you're standing up, you better get ready for this, because it's going to hit the ear, eardrums. Uncle the Broadcast. You are listening to Uncle the Broadcast. My name's Aaron. I'm the nephew-in-law. Here with me is the star of the show, Uncle. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Mind my business, because I have peanuts in my mouth. But um, I have I have 265 episodes. This is the Comedy Hour. Right. We end up at the Comedy Hour. <clears throat> Good thing to be here, Uncle. Now, we have, we have a new system here. Nice looking room. And we moved in, finally. So we're in the new room. Common sense of all this kind of stuff. <clears throat> okay. Yeah, yeah, tell them to people we have a new room. Yeah, I, I know. Are you okay with the peanuts? I didn't realize you're still eating. Just, yeah, yeah, just snacking on. Okay, okay. Um, <laughs> just making sure that you're going to make it through here. Uh, yes, we're live on Ocelli.com as we always are on a Friday night, uh, 11 p.m. Eastern. It's 8 p.m. Pacific for us. We also mm. do a live stream video version of this on Twitch, on YouTube. You can get those at UncleThePodcast.com. I see Creative Accidents. Crazy Accidents. Are you going to be talking tonight? He's Come on, Accidents. I need two right away. Come on. Come on, call me. He is talking in the uh, Twitch chat. That's good. And we've I got the Ocelli.com <laughs> chat room up, too. That's uh, been very lively in the first hour. Um, creative Accidents is saying peanuts in the Ocelli.com chat. Uh, so, mm. but Uncle, we do have a caller on the line. There is a caller on the answer. line? Yeah, so if you Ah, want. first caller. All right, let's see. Who is this on the line and where are you from? And here we go. Hello? Hey, Uncle, how you doing? Hey, can you hear me? Oh, honey. Yeah, yeah. Nice and clear. Uh, all right, it's Sam Idolette sure. here, uh, the author of Dancing With My Fate. Nice to, nice to oh, talk ooh. to you again. How you doing? Not again. Yeah, yeah. You remember Sam, uh, uh, Uncle, when we had him on before? Um, we had him on before. He's a very good one to talk to. Yeah, yeah. He's a good one. Thanks. For having, having, you, having that, to, for having to, having about fates and stuff. Just not much of that around. I know it's a lot. We have to learn it some more. We do. I study these people, and they got to start understanding, <clears throat> Sam. So, so much to understand, Sam. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. No, that, I that. completely agree, Uncle. I mean, it's just crazy here now. Just crazy. It's just <laughs> out of proportion. <clears throat> now, are you watching? Do you ever watch previews? I mean, uh, reviews of shows? Just to ask. Sam? Like, what kind of shows? Like, uh, um, shows like you review them. Um, and oh, like, I, I was like just. YouTube? Like, on, like in the movies. Do you ever review them? I just asked. Oh, does. Sam, are are, are you just, wondering if Sam, the shows that he watches, yeah. that. Would he like to do a review of a show that he watches? Is that yeah? That, that does he does he listen ah, to? Yeah, yeah. Uh, do, that's do, the question I'm asking. Do you do any reviews? Do you do any yeah. media reviews? We mean <laughs> reviews. Yeah, I, I'm, I, I asked you that. But, I mean, oh, there's always a first time, so you know. Oh, no, I <laughs> but, asked no, that I because have. every. Oh, I asked that because we we watch this Top Gun and people. Uh, I make mean, sure they. Watched it first before I tell them, and that's my woo is you have to watch the show from the from the beginning, and then go to the. Uh, but if you haven't, that's fine. But I was just wondering if you did. Well, d- would you like Sam to do a review of a show at all now, Uncle? Is that well, if happens? he's interested in them, 
Uh, well, okay, Sam. How about this? Is there um, any show that you would like to do? Maybe a, even a quick review on. It doesn't have to be long if you don't want it to be. Yeah. Quick little review. Ooh, um, yeah. So I mean, um, I did enjoy the, yeah. the the Top Gun review. That I think that's what I'm going oh, to. But I haven't seen haven't right. seen the second one yet. I haven't seen it yet. So you have seen the first one though, right? Um, you have seen the first oh, one, yeah, no? Yeah. All right, you know, you're ahead of the game then. So you watch that second one, and I might catch you next week. All right, for for the show, okay. you can you 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 can review it. I'll let you review that. Oh, okay, the review. Has I mean, to be for, Top Gun is that it? Well, it's the show <laughs> reason what we've been talking about. Okay, I don't okay. want to go to one that he hasn't watched. All right. All right, you know I, I, mean? I don't know the review uh, rule here. I'll That's what I'm trying to tell them the rule. Got it. Now I, know. I mean, so I, you watch them, you go, and whatever time you can go, go and watch it, and then we'll go from there. Better go watch that Top Gun, Sam. Uh, Sam. Yeah, like, I got my homework. Yeah. I will. I will uh, watch it. And get back okay. To the yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because uh, I don't like to ruin it on people that hasn't seen it. Uh, that, that's my ruling. I mean, I just, they have to look and they have to see it. Even my producer, uh, he didn't see it, the second one. Hey. No, uh, I, yeah, I haven't gone to see it yet. Here he comes, here he comes. Yeah, I haven't yes. gone to see it yet. I know, I know. I, I got to get to see it. But, you know, Sam, maybe there's something you've seen recently you want to talk about. Is there anything you want to want to yeah. enter a review in, a quick one? Oh, yeah. Well, what you oh. haven't seen. Uh well, so my wife and I have been watching, rewatching Lost. If anyone remembers that from like wow. 2005, <laughs> anyone remember that that show? Back to I the remember show it being movie. on. I never actually watched Lost, but I, I definitely everybody knows of it being on. Oh, yeah. Lost, that movie Lost. Did you ever watch that series? Off I no? was on and off watching it. You were, but but not constantly studying it well if that's what you meant yeah, i would have thought you might have seen that one, yeah. i know people have though in this family so, so what's your review but, of lost uh, uh, what, what's your review well so i haven't gotten to the last uh episode yet but uh there's six seasons and so far i mean i'm on the sixth season and uh it's chalking up to the to the big you know question of like free will versus predestination like you know can we can we affect our our destiny or are things just gonna you know pay you know play out the way they the way they will and it's an interesting concept i'm kind of interested to see where they take it in the end because and i also want to i i made a note to myself to look up who if i could figure out who uh who financed it because <laughs> i'm curious if they you know who who it was you know like there could be an, a hidden agenda, as there sometimes is. Interesting, interesting. Uh, hidden agenda, Uncle. What do you think hmm. of that? Yeah, well, that's what he's, what his mind is thinking of what he had was doing. So, but yes, didn't I just put on? Didn't I open up this window? Oh, is, is it, are you getting too hot, Uncle? It's getting warm. Um, um, okay, I'm, I will open up the window for our. Uh, because I had it open, I had it open when when you first started, and sort of got cut down. Cool. Yeah, well. One moment. He's getting the window open because we got the mayor coming through here. I heard. Let the air in. Let the air in. It's supposed to be cool today. All right. Um. So. Uh, so what? So what? Um. I don't. Know, what could we do then? What did I talk about? <clears throat> All right, the window is open. The frogs are quite loud again, but uh, it'd be cool if they actually came over. I, I doubt anybody will hear it on the show. Oh, but it's always yeah. a nice, relaxing sound that when you're out in the yard to hear that. These frogs that make noise. Uncle, I have a question for you. Yeah, go ahead. If you if you want, um, how how are you liking the uh, the desert? Yeah, have you been out there? It's, a couple oh, I've been out there. I've been out there, but I'm I'm waiting. I'm waiting patiently on these guys. To, uh, we got we got the process trying to move on. They 
get it moving so we can let them make money. <laughs> That's what I'm waiting for. It's, it's moving <laughs> in around. In process, process of doing that, but they got to get a, a contract. We, we actually have done. another call now. I'm oh, yes. I heard a call. So, Sam, feel free to stay on the yes, line. Yes, stay on the line. The other well, call. Another call on the line. Uh, yeah. Caller. Oh. Welcome to the Uncle Show. It's Friday night on Ocelli.com. Thank you for being here. Hello. Well, ladies and gentlemen, Spent Kent has entered the building. Oh, no. There he is. My favorite man. The wrestler is back. What? Wasn't here. The what? man is finally what? back. Comedy Animals is just started. Very funny. It's starting up. It's we got the guy. We got the guy that starts the program. Hello there. Um... Well, I tell you, a movie everybody should be reviewing, and it's Predator. I was in that movie. Oh, I picked were. the kid off the ground. He yes, was bleeding. I that. said, kid, we ain't got time to bleed. All right, Jesse. Oh, yeah. Hey, guys. It's Ben Ken. How's everybody doing here on oh, Friday oh. night? How you doing, Uncle? Oh, hi there. You. Oh, you had your buddies in there. Man. He's, he made a good comedy show. We had a good comedy yeah, going in. Some of these Can't, guys, you know, they jump in every now and again when I call. You know, they're they're over here just messing around, just running around, drinking beer, and some of them are just jumping off the walls, whatever. But they, once in a while, <laughs> they'll jump up and make a comment, say hello to, to Uncle and Aaron and Chuck. So oh, they're yeah. just they're around. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> okay, this is <laughs> yeah, well, it's glad to have you here. Glad uh, to have you. Yeah, yeah. Well. Uh, we're reviewing shows. We're uh, talking about all sorts of important topics here on the show tonight, as we always do. We also have Sam Idlett, author of Dancing With My Fate, on the line with you. So we have company going here. There's another well, couple talking about. All right. Yeah, what's that? No, no, ahead, Uncle. I, I just have a question when you guys. Uh, I, I was going to say about another program that I've already watched through. But it's the thing. But it starts back. It's coming back next month. The movie? The, the show I've been watching. And your sister, your wife have been watching. You're talking about the th- – oh, that I thought thing. you meant the thing from outer space. You're talking about – Uncle has been watching Stranger Things, right? Stranger Things. That's what it's called. Yes, yeah. yes. A Stranger Things. And, man, I tell you, that is funny. That is more weird than any of them. But – now that now that I found out the punchline of that end of that one uh, under that four was hold on July four July first what a punchline at the end of four here it is and I'm ready to run what a drop line they have to wait to the July first to continue. Oh, that got to me when I saw the India of that part four. But it still continues. Yeah. Oh, boy. Luke, Luke is saying that he likes the first season of Stranger Things, but not the others. Creative Accents is wondering why we haven't been drinking dollar store beers lately. I, I, I ask that sidekick over here. Um, ask the sidekick, man. No, ask every, me. Every time I've been to a dollar store, they, they haven't had anything new. It's been a while since they've had anything new, so I will keep checking back, but I haven't seen anything. And I don't even feel like drinking a beer right now, honestly. I feel a little oh. queasy. I don't know what's going Uh-oh. on. Oh, don't tell me it's a sign of something. Well. Something is starting again. But, um, <laughs> uh, Kent, you, go, you Kent. said you had a question. What yeah, man. Wait, go ahead. What you have? Yeah, now it's actually turning to two because he brought up Stranger Things. Um, I never watched Lost back in the day. My my bass player, my best friend at the time back then, uh, oh. he watched it religiously. And I, I know it went like nine or more seasons. And now I got Hulu, and I'm like, I, I want oh, yeah, to jump kidding. back to that long ago. To, to, to Is it worth to go and binge watch it? And then the second one is I never watched Stranger Things, and now they got a season four on Netflix. I'm like ready to just – Start binging that one. I never seen that one either. Are these really good? Go to one first before you go to season one first. Continue up, and then you'll see the you'll see the you see what happens. Progression, Pro- progression. Yeah, of the story. Yeah, of the really story of the like profession. It's yeah. The time though, it's like, go. do I want to? Oh, it's short when you get older. <laughs> yeah, it yeah, um yeah, yeah. it is interesting. But what I've saw so far, very interesting. 
Uh, Sam, have, have you seen Stranger Things at all? Yeah. Did you see I it? Did, I did see the season one. Yeah. I haven't, oh, you I haven't did. seen any of the other seasons. Yeah. Oh, you got to go to one, two, you got to go two, three, four now. I went through the whole thing. Uh, yeah, I mean, if I like it, all the way. I'll binge it. I got it on Hulu, and I got lost also. Oh. But, like, I've oh, always do. hesitated. I watched La Brea, which I actually liked. Um, mm. And the season one, uh, that's a C, uh, I don't know, a CBS or ABC show. And the uh. season two now should be coming any month now. But that's actually, like, deals uh. with time travel and stuff. It was kind of cool, kind of. People said it was like Lost in the reviews, but I've never seen Lost either. So, like I'm saying, I'm wondering if that's worth jumping up, binging on, or Stranger Things. So I've got, I've heard people love them, like good reviews, but I'm kind of wondering room. what you guys think that have actually seen the show. Yeah, man. Well, well, I said um, uh, that seems pretty. I'd say interesting. Uh, uh, of course, they're little, little. Little scary, of course. These which, things. Which, but which do you think is better, what, Sam? Because you've seen you both think? of those series. Which Which one do you like better, Stranger yeah. Things or Lost? Yeah. Which one do you think? You like? Yeah. So I like Lost. I mean, so personally, Stranger uh, Things is it's, it's too it's too creepy for me. I can't do uh, it. I, I thought that. I I knew that. <laughs> I knew somebody would say. I knew that would come up. Somebody was creepy, didn't want to couldn't handle it. Creepiness. Uh, it, it, to yeah. me, did this creepy stuff, to me, it's like I'm back to Jason or the other guy. Freddy? Craig, or Craig, Craig, Craig. Craig? Yeah, Freddy Craig. Krueger. Craig Kruger or, 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 or Friday 13. To me, it's like a yeah, Halloween, yeah. a Halloween show. If you put yeah, it in a little bit of perspective, Michael Halloween Myers. show. Oh boy, here we are. Back to new Halloween shows. Heck, why not? I don't go trick or treating. The kids do that. I go watch a show. Boom, pop them things on, and boom, there you go. I mean, these are what I, I sort of, sort of like those kind of things. Yeah, yeah they're fun. Uh, and those uh, movies, you know, that we're, we were just talking about there, Uncle, uh, you know, I think. I don't know how old. I think Aaron's a little bit younger, but like, like Chuck and I were teenagers during the eighties. You yeah. know, I was sixteen in eighty six, and Chuck was probably fourteen. So all those movies, we both. We, I'm sure he saw most of them too. They were really but, awesome yeah. back then, when you're especially when you're a teen. Oh. Man, I mean, I mean, I jumped out of my bed when oh, here comes Jason. I love those. Uh, yeah, I love I, those horror movies. Going as a look crazy. You know, I'll tell you something, though. A complete waste of time is this recent uh, uh, Halloween movie, Halloween Kills. It's awful. I got to tell you that because I got a chance to see that. I won't watch it because it's free on when I'm up at work, I was considering. But I I, I got out of the Halloween thing by the mid-90s, you know. Yeah, I mean, like, when when you're, when you're, you know, Boogeyman is is less realistic than Jason Voorhees as far as his survival, (laughs) okay, I'm, I'm good. You know what I mean? It's just, it's over. Yeah. Um, anyways, so, yeah, no, I would not go with the Halloween Kills thing. Uh, I mean, really bad. I couldn't believe how bad it was. And they even brought Jamie Lee Curtis Michael. back into it. Yeah. There's the other one, Michael, coming walking down the street with a mask on. Michael Myers? Michael, you know, Michael Myers. Michael Myers, yeah. Halloween. That, yeah. yeah, that one. Uh, it, it's, Oh, another oh phone gosh, call. Another Hold call. on. Okay. Oh, we got another caller. Hold on the line there for a minute. All right. And uh, let's get this caller. <clears throat> Hello? Hello? You're on the line. Call. You're on the line. Oh, hello. This is Jimmy James. Uh, uh, Jimmy! Jimmy! Oh, we're sitting in your chairs, by the way, Jimmy. Yes, we are. We got Thank your you chairs. We're sitting in chairs. We are using them right now. Yeah. So... Uh, yeah, you know who was also scary in those Michael Myers movies was a psychiatrist. That guy also never died. Oh, yeah. So what did Sutherland, Donald Sutherland, that did the first one? No, it's Sutherland. always the same old guy. Donald Pleasance, somehow the name oh, of Pleasance, my head. sorry. Pleasance, okay. it wasn't Sutherland. Yeah. No, because uh, he yeah, was in a... a little what pictures, I thought. Yeah, until, he, until he until well, he died, the then, 
Yeah, until he died, yeah. and they replaced him with uh, with another guy who was like a pseudo version of his character. That it was like, oh, this guy was working with that doctor the whole time. Uh, they just introduced yeah. another guy in there. <laughs> that was like, yeah. okay. But, uh, no, I shot him seven times. Yeah, Donald Pleasance is, is that guy. So, uh, yeah. Right. Yeah, uh, yeah, I got, uh, right, I don't know, I got twisted around there. But, yeah, because so, I know Sullivan, Keith or Sullivan's father, you know. And he was in the original MASH, so. Anyway, oh yeah, that's um, right. Spent Ken for a reason. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. oh, nice. Right. Wasn't he in one of the uh, Invasion uh, of the Body Snatchers I movies agree. too? Body Snatchers. Sutherland. There's like it is familiar. He's in that me. vampire yeah. movie, The Lost Boys. I know that. <laughs> well, Keeper Sutherland. I have a movie. question for Uncle. <coughs> I have a oh, question man. for Uncle. <laughs> what? Yeah, what? Uh-oh. What's happening there? Oh, Check on something. That's a woman. When you were a kid, did you watch Robin Hood? Oh, Robin Hood. Oh, talking? yes, Robin Hood. Which one? Which one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which one? The the one? Yeah, the name is one. Britain. Oh. Okay, do you remember the guy sure that about. played the cowardly Prince John? Yeah. That was also Donald Pleasance. Uh, oh. Okay. Donald Pleasance. There you go. You recognize that? <laughs> yeah, 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 that's right. I can't remember that. Yeah, you, you remember weren't going yet. Remember the one in the beginning of the an arrow hitting a target and they go, <laughs> yeah. Robin Hood. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, Robin Hood. Like Everybody follow the right? 60s or yeah. 70s? Yeah, it was around in that time. Oh, right. I'm thinking like 50s. It came out yeah, in the 50s. Yeah, 50s. It, was, yeah, it had to be later 50s if I'd have seen it. Who might so have I seen it was my sister. As, uh, she was 50. You know, like, uh, oh. But it had to be later 50s if it came out. The later 50s. Yeah, there's one like, that's old, like 57, 59, something like that. It's long before my time. So, no, yeah, 59, I if it, I hope it was 59, that's the only time I would have known it. But I don't, I'm not sure oh, what it would be. That's true. But I, um, I had it had to be. Robert either. Men in Tights and like a couple mm-hmm. others after. There was one like in 2018 yeah. recently. It was okay. That one, I that the ones in tights, I thought was funny. Oh, that's <laughs> the that's Mel crazy. Brooks. Mel, one. Yeah, yeah, the Mel yeah, Brooks. Yeah, those funny. were yeah, funny. Yeah. I, those were the funny ones. I mean, the those kind of that yeah. moment they start falling down, and, and then they were starting. They started, ah, and I had to go back, change, go back and forth. Yeah. You remember, know, that, that remember the guy that said, uh, "Hey, hey, Blinken." And the blind guy said, did you say Abe Lincoln? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's my favorite yeah. part of that movie. That movie <laughs> me yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, Mel Brooks films are always uh, yeah. a lot of fun, for but, sure. Um, yeah, and yeah he's, he's a master of the spoof, to be sure. Um, yeah, for Friday night, Uncle the Broadcast, we're here. We've got, I lost track of how many people we have on the line now. I know we have Jimmy James. We have Spent Kent. We have four of them. Let. We have four. That Actually, if you uncle? counted. We got three. If you counted. We got three right now. We got three. Yeah. If you counted, what's his name first started talking? Well, what's his name? Uh, uh, the Wrestler. Oh, yeah. The former I did not governor of that. Minnesota. I mean, I mean, the governor of Minnesota. So that. that's five. Okay. Chuck. There we go. Okay. I forget that. You forget that, Chuck. Got to keep up calls. with it. It's good. It's exciting. It's fun. I mean, so I had five so far. Yeah, there we go. It's a lot of calls. So um, what what else have we got? Um, let's see. What else can we talk about? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh... Well, let's let's go back to Sam. Sam was Sam? the first caller. Oh yeah, we're back glad to, Sam. to have you here, Sam. Is there any other reviews that you, yeah. you think you have in you tonight? Because yeah. these, you know how important these reviews are. You, any of those? Oh man, let's see. If we're gonna do like '80s movies, 
One of my favorites is They Live. Have, has anyone on the call seen that? Oh, Put on yeah. the glasses. <laughs> Put the glasses on. <laughs> reminds me of somebody saying I'd that. Say yes. Somebody reminds me of that saying that. Mention no name. So you you like the movie, Ken? I, I assume. You. Well, I, I have it. come here to chew bubble gum and kick ass, <laughs> and I'm all out of bubble gum. <laughs> oh, no. Put the glasses on. <laughs> Put the glasses on. Uh, apparently, uh, John Carpenter and uh, Rowdy Roddy Piper were were good friends on that movie shoot, and and, and they're, they're real buddies there. And definitely, I think Minnesota don't want to say about that. Somebody in Minnesota would say something about Pommy Papa Paca. Yeah, he, like he'd say something about that. It was an interesting piece of casting. I made the movie what it was, and I, I think I love that movie. It's, I think it's great. Well, the bubblegum part actually um, was something Rowdy Roddy Piper wrote a long time ago. Like he had a whole notebook full of crazy. You know, you don't throw rocks at a man with a machine gun. You got that <laughs> one. You've got. You know, there's several others. Anyway, so Carpenter <laughs> saw that and said, "That's going in the movie." That the, the bubble gum. That's like the most famous meme and quote from that movie. And that was yeah. all Hot Rod. He wrote that. Nice. Nice. Yeah, I mean, wrestlers, they're good ad libbing and, and they're, they're entertainers and they know how to they know how to do that. They're so it's it makes sense that uh, Carpenter would make use of that skill there that he certainly had. But yeah, I, I, to me that scene, the famous fight scene where they're fighting, he's trying to get his friend put to put the glasses, glasses on. Yeah, that was like oh, one of the boy. best right there. When he, so and the guy thought he was nuts, you know, because he saw him shoot up a bank, and then he's like, "Put on these glasses." It's like, man, get the away from me, you know. Uh-huh. Got to bleep that out there, but yeah. And he's like, "No, put on the glasses." And they had this big fight, and he finally gets his glasses on. The guy's like, "Whoa." You know, and then when you know when he's in the convenience store, he's like, "You take the glasses off, you look normal. Put them back on for Maldahide face." You know, yeah, <laughs> yeah. He, he was seeing yeah. everything with the glasses yeah. on. It was one of the greatest movies of all time, with one of the greatest actors and the greatest wrestler, I think, all around entertainer in professional wrestling of all time, Rowdy Roddy Piper, the Hot Rod. Yeah, he's he's good. Uh, Jimmy, do you have any thoughts on the movie? Yeah, that's good. yeah, yeah. <laughs> you like it? Okay. Well, we're yeah. we're glad you're in good company here. Yeah. Uh, Sam, anything that we need to know on this review? I know, I know you got some good material here. Uh, I mean, you co- you covered all the I, the fight scene is just my favorite part, and I love that it goes on for like twenty minutes. <laughs> it's so great. Oh. <laughs> yeah. 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 That's that's yeah, I forget uh that's, the guy's name. He actually hit Roddy Piper pretty hard during uh uh because they didn't have a lot of stunts through that, you know, and uh you know, Piper had talked about this before when he was still alive back in the day. And he was like, Yeah, he got me a good one and and uh but I was like, Yeah, let's just keep going and then that actual actor, I forget his name, was talking about it. he's like, Yeah, I man, I clocked him good. He wasn't ready uh, for it. And he was just like, come on, hit me again, you know, trying to imitate Piper. It was a great interview. Hilarious. But uh, that's the way Piper always said he was a fighter. You know, he was a great entertainer all around, like in and out of the ring. But, he was, you know, deep down he was always a bagpipe player. He was third in the, in the world or whatever uh, at one time. And he was a fighter. More than even a wrestler, he was a fighter. Found yeah. served the king. King, king Wanda, he always wanted that crown he's been sitting down that crown so long it's not funny <laughs> and then he goes saying i went this wrestling for my seat everybody going on in there started fighting to get his seat all the time remember that uh, that's from wrestling Is yeah from wrestling okay i remember I, I that back in the time when he was when they had this wrestling program. When, when Rowdy Roddy Piper Rally, was wrestling. Yeah, Piper was a while wrestling. back. Wow, wow, a while back. back there, yeah. Piper's so, pit back when he had uh, Jimmy Snook on. I call that the greatest moment in TV history. I had people calling me, right? I was like, look, look I'll, you know, Saturday morning, 10 o'clock. I was like 14 years old, 1984, 85, whatever. Uh, Piper's pit. And uh, uh, he, he just 
like demolish Jimmy Snooker with the bananas and the Kawan coconut and all that. I don't know if anybody you haven't seen it, go watch it on YouTube. Just look up Piper Snooker, Piper's Pit, you know, and it'll show you this thing. It's hilarious. And, like, the phone rang <laughs> off the go. hook, as my friends call me. Like, you see Piper's Pit? Yeah, yeah, I'll call you after wrestling. <laughs> Yeah, I, I call that the greatest moment in television history. But it was so, I mean, just imagine being 14 years old. You know, he was my favorite back then. I didn't care about fan favorites or rule breakers, you know, heels or baby faces, whatever. Um, mm-hmm. He was my favorite even long before he had the pit, Piper's pit, back uh-huh. in the Georgia Championship Wrestling and before. <clears throat> so, you know, I, mm-hmm. that was just like, yeah, total biggest move a rule breaker I think has ever made in wrestling and it was so against a great competitor like Jimmy Snuka just a classic moment so well I think yeah, Uncle was look it up yeah Uncle was talking about the King of the Ring stuff that they used to do I don't know if they do those tournaments anymore where you become King of the Ring um yeah yeah oh yeah they're doing it right now okay well they're still man. doing them no it's money in the bank my bad but yeah they still do that oh was, well it's because somebody has to have the chip well, no, he passed away, but somebody has to keep the warm seat warm, <laughs> as you say. You know. Yeah, weird thing with uh, Jerry the King Waller for the long time, mm-hmm. longest time. He was one of those guys who got the King of the Ring tournaments. He would win those. Uh, but uh, he, well, he actually he was had the a King long before those things. Yeah, but he, but he actually had a heart attack on air. Which uh, you yeah, want to look I remember up something that. on YouTube? I remember watching it live. I thought it was a, a joke at first, but then I'm like, "Whoa!" He had a heart attack during a wrestling event. Jerry Lawler. <laughs> I was like, "Yeah, I, I remember thinking the same thing." I don't know if it's fake or real, but it turned out to be very real. Um, I mean, yeah, Michael Cole would comment the rest of the show. He had it in silence the whole time. He wouldn't. Hey, Chuck. Yeah. Hey, Chuck. When that guy had his heart attack. And <laughs> like two bimbos dressed up in like fake nurses come out and we and to put them in a stretcher and they took them out. <laughs> well, see, in my memory, they were, actually did though. I and, and, and like yeah. Cole didn't know what to do. See, in my memory, I think they pulled the cameras back, so I couldn't tell what was going on. Uh, you know, in the in the live broadcast, I mean, maybe maybe there's different angles on it. You know, like I say, that exist today. But I remember them pulling the cameras way back, and you just see him leaving at a certain point. And it's like, what? what is actually going on here? Um, yeah, nobody well, knew. Well, Cole started freaking out. That's what happened. when you, 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 there, there, I think there was, they were following a match, whatever match was on. Right. And, like, Cole started uh, freaking out. We need medical help, you know. And then they came out, and I don't know, but did they put him on a stretcher? I don't remember. But he got out of there, and Cole said, yes, I think uh, – I think uh, you know Michael Cole. He still re- he, you know, he still commentates today. He's like, I think Jerry the King Lawler has just had a heart attack. Um, I'm very concerned. I don't have any information. This is not a joke, and I am not going to speak anymore. You can watch the rest of the show. There's like 20 minutes left. Yeah. You know, and he's like, um, there will be no more commentating for this show, and that was it. Uh-huh. Yeah, and then, no, and I remember that. The rest of the show for like 20 minutes. Yeah, I remember that. They just it just totally disrupted the whole rest of the show, and uh, yeah, yeah. He, he didn't hit, he didn't the guy the other guy's partner. You say his, his name is Cole. I don't even remember that. I just remember he didn't handle it too well. It was just like I don't know I don't know what to say. Uh, you know, pretty much. Again, I only saw this mm-hmm. maybe once. Uh, you know, a long long time ago when it happened. Um, mm. But you remember uh, what happened to Owen Hart, right? Oh yeah, but. See, At I don't remember. Like they all had to go through that, and they kept the show going. They never stopped the show or nothing. Right. They kept the show going after that, and that dude died. You know, literally in front of everybody. Yeah. He fell from the, you know, the rafters or whatever, whatever they call them things up there, the rafters. He fell and died to his. He went to his death. Right. Bounced off the ropes in the ring, and it was just nasty. Yeah, see, I didn't see oh, that pay per view. Cell phone from it now, yeah. like really crappy, but you can get the gist of it, anyways. Yeah, no, I see, and I, I didn't have that pay per view that night. Uh, so, Neither did I. I just heard about it the next day on the news. Yeah, me too. That's exactly. It was like what? Yeah, okay. The guy actually died, and it was like, wow. Okay, um, you know, so I mean, it was such you, a stupid stunt. I mean, Shawn Michaels did it before. 
and um, zip line down. Sting has done it, you know, in WCW. Sting oh, has yeah. done it. Sting has um, done it's everything. Dangerous. You can mention him. You know? Yeah, well, Uncle loves Sting. Bob Barker. Uh, that's my boy, Sting. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Because uh, I I got a kick out of Sting because of his vision eye look. He's got this eye look that gets to my attention. Man, if an icon. you have his uh, at the icon, but he's but he sits there like he's up in the rafters, and you see him. He's got the eye looking at you. I'm like, oh no, this looks like something's gonna happen. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, Steve see- Borden, he's he's awesome. I mean, he's a like I said, an icon. Uh-huh. Sting, and he was. I liked him back before he did the whole crow thing. You know, when he was just crazy, short haired, spiked hair with the face paint. Yeah, wow. yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, you running around against player the horseman. It was great. That was yeah, like rest yeah. days. And even it, he even beats that guy. The one, um, what, uh, what, you're saying Sting does? He, Sting beats, um, in a match? Yeah, what's his name with the orange and red? Um, can't think of this guy's name. What's now. he do? He's another wrestler? He's done the wrestler. Um, you're not talking about the ultimate warrior again, right? No, no, not him. Because he had face paint. Hulk Hogan. They were actually tagging. Yeah, Hulk Hogan. Hulk Hogan. He he even beats Hulk Hogan. I mean, Sting does to me. I mean, because he's more of a serious guy. Hulk Hogan, of course, he was a change of pace of other things. Yeah, he was doing the whole NWO thing then. Oh, yeah, yeah, the OWO thing. What a change that was. That was another one that I couldn't understand. Sting instead of Hogan. He was and gonna they do it. Decided his... to make Sting that icon of the crow. That's when they turned him into the crow like Sting. And, oh, uh, is that what happened? move that was, you know. Yeah, he made that. So, bird so he came out one night and he down. was just like goth or like black metaled out. Is, that's it's just like what was the debut of that? Well, what happened is like they accused him of joining the NWO or something, and they had a fake Sting. And I forget the guy's name, but he was a little bit bigger than Sting. And like, if you got up close, you could tell it's not Steve Borden. Oh, yeah. But that's what From I a did. distance, they had a fake Sting. And this is before I he went pro. And right. then he came back after months of leave where the NWO just ran amok. And then he started showing up in the rafters. And they're like, that's Sting. And he had that new pro look. Started growing his hair a little bit longer, changed to the white face and right. the leather and the bat. And that's when that yeah. started. That was through the NWO. Uh, through, because okay. everything happens when the old NWO started. I mean, man, you're not just watching what's in the ring; you're watching what's all over the ring, like the sting up in the air. You have all these kind of crazy things happening, and they yeah, they, the they show Hogan and them were trying to get Sting to join up with them. He's with the yeah. he's with the Black and White brother. He's with the NWO, and then of course he yeah. wasn't. Yeah. You know, and that's Ooh. you know that that's when they were beating WWE in the Monday Night Wars. And that, oh, yeah, that's right, that's home. right. Yeah, Same yeah, WWE. it wasn't long, but yeah, that was that run. I I wasn't <laughs> watching it then. I was moving the whole thing. I didn't realize what the sting, so Sting was like this rogue character. I get it. Mm-hmm. I, I didn't know all the particulars of that, but yeah, that's interesting. And he carried it's, WCW basically through the entire nineties. Um. And so this was like towards the end of the 90s when he really started that whole Crow character and, mm. you know, just continued him being the icon he's always be- was becoming, you know, to this day. Right. And uh, I thought he was the most, for the before 2000 when the, it was Y2K there, and not Y2J, but um, they, there was a question on a show, uh, wrestling show that I called in on, and I, I said, really, I think for the for the past decade, for their nineties, I think Sting should be, you know, the best wrestler of the of the decade because he carried WCW all the way till Vince McMahon and the new Attitude Era with Stone with Stone Cold Steve Austin, where they finally oh, yeah, won the Monday Night Wars WWE, and Vince McMahon beat that mil- or billionaire uh, Ted Turner and, and uh, WCW and won the Monday Night Wars, but it took Stone Cold oh. and Brock. Coming up oh yes, 
Fuck, yeah, that's right. I remember that those I two remember together. Them two wounds. Yeah. Still, I'll remain a fan but of the... WCW was winning it for a while with the whole Sting thing and the NWO yeah. at first, but then they started... Their storylines got stupid. And, and, you know, people were going back between WWE and, and WCW at the time, like X-Pac. You know, he was part of six as the NWO, and he was back in Generation X with... With Triple H in them, so um, oh yeah, my Triple H. A lot of craziness going. It's the added beginning yeah. of the Attitude Era, but then when finally they launched Stone Cold Steve Austin, then eventually The Rock, that took over and won them the Monday Night Wars against Ted Turner. Yeah, so, I'm. A, I'm a I didn't even know Sting. I thought Sting was just a singer. I didn't even know. No, him. no, he's a rap. Sting, you know. No, Sting. You're thinking of is is uh, Kendo uh, in the Sting. That's the one that's your, your film. Don't You're dance. thinking of uh, Sting, the one that you like. Desert Rose. Yeah, I, I love Sting. Sting, I that's Sting. Sting. That's I Sting think he's thinking of. I but like we're Sting. talking about the wrestling Sting. Yeah, I, I, I know the, the recording artist Sting quite well. Yeah, yeah. I, I love his uh, solo stuff. I really yeah. do. I think it's better than um, the the police, personally. But Police, uh, it's the same it's one. Isn't it? He is the vocalist for the band The Police, but I, I like his solo stuff a lot. You actually oh, understand yeah. the lyrics in his solo material? Because I don't. Anytime I hear it, it's just like, is that actually words? I mean... <laughs> You're talking about Sting? Yeah, Jack? Sting. I'm gonna double it. Sting. Yeah, that, 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 that's it. I, no words, just noise. I, I can't listen to his solo stuff. <laughs> I can't, I can't oh, see there's different people oh, talking oh, different things. There's an example here. You don't like, you like it. It's just, it's just the way it is. I, I don't feel know. like his vocals are fairly coherent. Like I, I, I don't know. I, guess, I mean, there's certain ones like Desert Rose, later, later, later. I mean, obviously those aren't words, but like, mm-hmm. <laughs> there's when he's singing. Uh, <laughs> Okay, Actual English so. words, I can understand what he's saying pretty well. So. I, I can't tell half the time. I'm telling you, it's like, ah, okay, I'm not listening to this. I, you know, I want to <laughs> hear Scatman Carruthers. I'll turn that on. You know what I'm saying? Uh, yeah. I can't do it. When, but, do, we, when do we get? Uh, I don't listen to it either, Chuck. I hear you, brother. <laughs> you know, I mean, the police so was cool, get? but uh, anyway, I, I got to say though, I, I was a fan of the Undertaker, except during that era oh, yes, when they put him on a motorcycle that. and that was stupid uh when they oh american badass eh, stupid i liked it better when he was the Keep weird rolling, gothic rolling, character rolling, rolling. yeah right oh, Tell, tells you something right there that they're using that <laughs> <laughs> okay then really that bad. was watching wrestling and he did like the uh one that you mentioned chuck he the liked Undertaker. The Undertaker. That was his favorite one all the time. Sure. And he, he always I liked like the it. guy that always followed him, Paul. Oh, Paul. Oh, Bear. that's Paul the guy Bear. with the Paul with the with the thing in his the hand. Urn. The urn. Yes, what yes. the heck? I couldn't understand the beginning of this stuff. Bear. I'm ready for a match. Well, who's going to be in the cage? In the, in the coffin. Straight. Everybody oh, going crazy. Bear. And then they had the cave and yeah, sit there in the. I gotta ask, cause of my Ooh, eyesight being bad. My Undertaker. Yeah, I gotta, yeah, I gotta yeah. ask. I gotta ask this of everybody on the call, because uh, if you're familiar with Paul Bearer, you can comment on this. Uh, and because of my bad eyesight, right? That was the first guy I ever saw on TV that I could have swore he was wearing a rubber mask, and apparently he wasn't. Uh, <laughs> right? It's like it, it wasn't even just makeup. Uh, yeah. Like his whole head looked fake. The whole thing looked <laughs> fake as hell. And I'm looking at him going, this guy, he looks like he's wearing a rubber mask. Now, maybe it's just my <laughs> eyesight and the way I was looking at it on TV, but did anybody else get that impression from Paul Bearer? Uh, Uncle, did, did you get an impression that he had a, a fake head? In some sort, I thought it was a little bit okay. at that time. It looked like a fake head. You wore the it, makeup, but the makeup, to the makeup, like you're saying, the light face. it it turns it out, yeah. Chuck. It right. turns it out to thinking, oh, it's a fake head. Yeah, you but see, I mean, Chuck? there's so there were, so much, there were, some, there were sure. segments where he wouldn't wear the makeup, and then you would realize, like, oh wow, yeah, he does actually look. I know what you're talking about, Chuck. Yeah, but yeah. then when the makeup came off, you're like, whoa, he really is. 
Like he's just kind of a crazy looking dude. Yeah, yeah. like there, there was something there. very abnormal about his look to the point where his head looked like rubber to me on TV. <laughs> Swear to God. Yeah, that was because of what he said about it when he had that. What was it? Uh, uh, something. Yeah, ancient. I understand what you guys are saying. Uh, actually, that didn't really wasn't the problem because I already knew who he was as a manager. Yeah. He, I think he went by Personable Pringle or something back in USWE or whatever it was. Yeah, something like back that. Back yeah. in like 89 or 87. He was in AWA for a while, and he was a different manager. He was, And he, he was just a big, fat, weird guy. And then they made him into Paul Barrow, you know, and, and made him the manager of The Undertaker, and that's how that all started. Right, no, oh, I, I, I get his real name, but uh, like Personable Pringle was one of his characters he played. I, I get like all that, that but yeah. looking uh, but looking at his yeah, head, Mr. Pringle, he's the Paul it was Bear. long before Undertaker, though. Undertaker uh, was still mean Mark Callis, or it might be mean Mark Galloway. Yeah. Yeah. Which oh. weird weird thing? I've been confused on the street for the Undertaker before when I was younger. Um, wow! Oh my God, are you yeah, seven feet tall? Seventeen points? No, that was that was taller than all the kinds of wrestlers in that. Ring. That was my whole complaint: is that I'm not this friggin' tall, guys. I'm six foot. What are you talking about? And uh, no, <laughs> talking to me. In Asbury Park, Paul Bear looks like he's like five. Unless he was wearing stilts, you'd be half a foot taller than him. Well, I did used to wear, like, you know, uh, motorcycle boots and stuff like this and a trench coat just because. But the thing is that uh, when I had my hair long and all that, and, yeah, I was a couple inches taller because of the boots, but not that much. Uh, <laughs> and I have tattoos on my arms, and I don't know. I literally had a couple of people swearing up and down that I must be that guy. Uh, when wrestling was in town in Asbury, it happened to me on the boardwalk. And I was like, you know, I, I am not that guy. Uh, <laughs> you know. People come up to you. Your face looks like his face. The only thing is, you're not wearing stilts. If you're wearing stilts now, oh, they say, hey, that's him. Yeah. Everybody will go crazy, Chuck. Well, since I know Kent's a big expert on this, how tall was the Undertaker? Six six. He's he's probably something. about six six. And yeah, so, six, and, six. and I I tell you right now. Uh, I forget his real name in real life, but the uh, Paul Barra is probably about six foot tall, maybe even six one. Yeah, it totally doesn't look like he, a next he walks down next to the Undertaker, and he's not totally towered. Like, let me tell you something. If I walk next to the Undertaker, um, it's going to be like, who's that dude with next to who's that short guy next to the Undertaker? <laughs> you know, yeah. yeah. And I'm like five eight, but so and he's definitely uh. taller than me. He's probably like five ten. 5'11". I don't know, though. I mean, but it just seemed like me, as many times I saw them walk to the ring together, he wasn't totally towered by The Undertaker. The, the, the only yeah, the Undertaker, again, is 6'6". Six, six. Well, He's I not even that, one of the bigger ones, like, yeah. you know, as far as, like, well, Big Show, obviously, and, and certain other seven-footers, or even Kevin Nash at 6'9". Right. Oh, yeah, he was... 6'10". Kevin Nash, he was the one in... Uh, NWO, he's the one that was in that yeah, too. Yeah, him, him and uh, Scott Hall were the outsiders. Yeah. Oh yeah, they're the Scott outsiders. Hall, heck, he was about six six at the time. For the, I think yeah. uh, he was six. He's around six six. Well, you'll never uh, get him more. He was always a bigger wrestler before he became Chico. Yeah. Creative you know, accidents. Uh, you'll never get a more bizarre experience than actually having Andre the Giant walk past you, though, because oh, like that guy was giant, seven yeah. four, and uh, damn. <laughs> <laughs> he took your hand and dropped it down with one hand. What are you talking about, Chuck? No, he was you huge. You take that one hand of him and boom. Well, that's what I'm saying. I actually show is over. You know, <laughs> you know, they used to come down and they would actually shake some hands, you know, on the side rails and all that. Well, in Asbury Park, they yeah. had it set up like that at Convention Hall. So Andre comes down to the aisle where I am, and I'm like, wow, <laughs> like the guy yeah, was humongous. humongous. I mean. You know, they tell you seven foot big. four, five hundred pounds, whatever. Like they weren't lying. Um, really, really huge guy. Yeah, he was. He was That's almost. He, he was around seven foot. He's been quoted at seven two, and around oh. four hundred eighty pounds to five hundred pounds. But I think some of that's exaggerated. I think he was really way, uh, in at seven one. There's. I, I think their like stories aren't even accurate. Of some of what people talk about. But creative, uh, creative accents. The big show, you know, show, big show, Paul White, 
uh, who, who first came out as his son in WCW, which was stupid. But if he was fatter, he'd be every bit as big. I think he's actually as tall as Andre. And um, I would actually think that he was uh, the Big Show it was probably stronger in, in when they were both in their prime. I bet you Big Show would have because uh, he was a little more, oh, he was a little leaner, I don't know. he was a little I don't leaner know. and stronger. I think. Well, Andre, but, man, I, have you watched that documentary where the other wrestlers that went against Andre the Giant talk about how, like, if you really ticked him off? He would really hurt you, and there was nothing you could do about it. Yeah, that's. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, nobody denies that. But Big Show <laughs> is kind of the same way. Big Show is about seven seven one, um, and he's a good four hundred and eighty pounds or whatever. And but Big Show's muscular. He hits the gym. Yeah. You know, both of these guys are just naturally freakishly strong. It won't matter. I mean, right. you could slam anybody just about anywhere they want. But I would, I, if I had to go put Paul White against Andre the Giant in their prime, I'd probably go with Paul White. I would probably go with the Big Show, just yeah. because he's a little leaner, a little quicker, and probably maybe even a little stronger. But Andre did way more. Yeah, see, it's it's a and, tough call because where is Andre in his prime? He wrestled injured and in pain for a long time. Uh, so. A 1978. A 1978 Andre, Andre. I'd take a 1978 Andre the Giant, about 25, 20, 30 years old, whatever he was then. Okay. I don't know. And I'd take, a, I'd, take a, I'd take a 30-year-old Big Show. Well, I think it's even money. i got to be honest with you. Because, uh, yeah. yeah, I mean, it's it's not like you've got a huge advantage uh, either way. Uh, and, and Andre, I don't know, I think Andre might have been a little more, you know... <laughs> I mean, he was drinking a lot. <laughs> that documentary is... Is hilarious. Oh yeah, he would drink. He drink like a hundred beers or something. They said. Yeah, I mean, remember when he? I, I, I don't know if we used to say the S word, S H I T, but uh, he 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 was wrestling Bad News Brown, and he and he, you know, put his butt against his face in the in the corner, you know, against the ropes there, and the and uh, he, you know, Andre just let one rip, and it just. Like diarrhea everywhere because he had been out drinking and eating like fish or something oh, the night or like earlier like the night before the day before, and he was like having you know problems and uh, apparently he crapped all over Bad News Brown. Yeah, then, I, don't know, I don't know if it's televised. In the I'm the story. That's that, I don't know if that's true. I, yeah, I, yeah, there is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There is so much. Yeah. <laughs> Could you imagine that massive ass? You know, just you're having a wrestling match with this 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 rhinoceros, and he just backs up and just craps on you. You know, I was gonna say shits on you. It's just for the effect, right? Uh, Leave yeah. it out, Chuck. But yeah. yeah, just imagine that. So bad. I have the bad news, Brown. Though heard, never saw a video, but I heard the story. No, fair enough. For I lots mean, of people. To me, it was, uh, but you know, the whole thing when when he goes in WrestleMania three, I guess it was, and uh, you know, he wrestles Hulk Hogan and all that. Uh, you know, he was barely functional. The passing by then. of the torch. Yeah, I mean, he was barely functional by then, and uh, you could tell. I mean, I, I saw that on a closed circuit TV. If anybody, you kiddies don't know what that is, uh, closed circuit TV location. Uh, I went to yeah, go see that. I remember that. And. Um, yeah, it was you know it was clear that he was not at his best uh, by then. But yeah, a 1978 Andre the Giant would be a whole other animal uh, c- compared to what he was throughout a lot of his career. Because again, he was injured. Yeah, he was and in, not, compared to 1988 when you're talking about, or whatever, 1887. Whatever, whatever it was, yeah. Because I was a teenager, so yeah, yeah. it might have been 88, 87. I don't know. Somebody can look. But up everybody even says years. back then he he uh, he personally pass the torch to Hulk Hogan. He didn't have to. Because everybody would have said in a real fight or whatever, yeah, Andre would still win because he's so powerful. Yeah. Like, Hogan was strong and everything, bodybuilder, but he was so outmatched by that guy. You know, if that guy ever got anybody down, there's nothing you could do. You can't move 500 pounds off of you. I don't care who you are. Right. It, that's the and thing. And 500 pounds that's so strong that's just choking your face. You know, well, that's like, the thing. Is five hundred pounds of anything? 
You're not moving it. I'm sorry. Uh, hardly anybody can. Yeah, yeah, you're not moving a rhino. You're not moving Andre. You're not moving show either. Big show. So <laughs> just that hand. Yeah. That hand himself with the giant. Just that hand. Take it up and you're done and you're done. Well, that's what that's I was saying. Less than one minute and 45 seconds before the match is ended. Well, my hand just. That him, was his. Yeah, that just, was his move. See, just him shaking hands yeah. on his way to the ring, Uncle. Well, my well, hand, and I'm six foot tall. Hand just, it. It just disappeared. My yeah. hand disappeared right. in Andre's hand. Right? Right. <laughs> and I was just exactly. like, Boom. and that's what I'm saying. One goes down, the man had him down pinned. It then over. It's over. Yep. Bing, 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 bing. I wouldn't want him to grab any part of me, even like my arm, my bicep. Say I got like a 15, 16 inch arm. I, he would just rip it off. Oh, yeah. He would just rip he, my arm out of my sock. Any one of us. I mean, he was just that powerful. Oh, yeah. You know, that and his spine, yeah. You know who else was strong as hell like that, although you might not know it, is uh, is Scotty Bigelow, Bam Bam. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Seriously, freakishly strong, Bam Bam was. Is that I gotta eat the pose yeah, again. He's a big guy, though. I mean, uh, all in all, you, you expect him, like, you're not gonna want to just, hey, I wanna go fight Bam Bam Bigelow. That would have been stupid. No. Nah. But, um. But, you but know, people. Really what? freakishly strong in wrestling today is that, uh. Well, yeah, John Cena was always freakishly strong. And that, uh, uh the French guy that, that they brought out. Now, I can't remember his name, but, like, uh, he's, he's freakishly strong. Like, he, He's, and they're skinny, oh, and they don't even look like they're that big, whatever? but they're freakishly Batista. strong. That was my opinion. Batista was his name? You yeah, thinking Batista, of? but Batista's a bodybuilder. He's not, like, freakishly strong like, uh, like the guy. I can't remember his name. It'll come to me, but... Oh. Well, Bam you know, Bam... He's a, he's a ball guy. Kind of looks like yeah. Jason Strahan, but on steroids. Well, see, Bam Bam, I'm going to uh, tell you, he's the smaller of the two Bigelow brothers, first of all. <laughs> and, um, you Bam know... Bam. The the other thing was that uh, I drank with the guy, and uh, despite the fact that he was, uh, yeah, it did, a, a <laughs> couple of places in Asbury, he was from Neptune, mm. New Jersey, which is the same place I was from. He had been the captain of oh. our uh, high school wrestling team, uh, as a matter of fact, when he was a kid. What, um, what is this with the guy on the poles? He's taking the poles off, whipping, the, whipping this, the, uh, the wrestling match. Oh, you're talking Take George the, the Animal off. Steel. Yeah, that steel. Yeah. That guy chowing down his ate a whole big piece of porn. And what did he have? He didn't have teeth in his mouth. I like to know what he ate, what he had. <laughs> I, I don't know what You're was going on. Steel? Yeah. yeah. I would like to yeah, know what he had in his mouth. At, uh, the cap <laughs> that guy, he started taking the poles away. That yeah, was funny. I saw Snooker and Don Morocco, and I saw Bob Backlund against... Uh, uh, who the heck he was he, he, uh, I saw Andre and Big John Studd too and that, that, oh, yeah, that, that's yeah. the big one and the Bob back yeah. to defend against somebody that was like 82, 83 well let's get the, uh, the guy from uh, um, Minnesota on here we could Oh well, well, actually, why don't we do shout outs? Got about three minutes the show. Mm -hmm. I think on that's the good. show since we have so many callers why don't we go uh, oh. Sam are you still there are you there Sam yeah, yeah, I'm here. I'm, 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 okay, a, I'm a fan sweet. of wrestling. I'm not. My depth is not as much as a lot of the people on this call right now. But, <laughs> but we were just, we just talking about it. I mean, what else is there? Sam, do you have any shout outs uh, tonight? Shout out right now. Shout out to, uh, to one of my faves, which wasn't mentioned, which is mankind. Yeah, he's good. Uh, I really, I don't know why, but I really like mankind. He was one of my favorite wrestlers. Mrs. Foley's little boy. <laughs> yeah. Nick Foley, great wrestler. Great, weird you know, guy. Nick Foley, <laughs> Mankind, Cactus Jack. Uh, what was the other one? He had another one, Dude Love. He had a oh, couple Dude of Love, yeah. Yes, Cactus Dude Jack Love. I remember really him. Really famous with, and then became Mankind, and then he did all of them in WWE. And Mick Foley, and, mm -hmm. you know, Mick Foley's mom, what did Jim Ross used to say? Mrs. Foley's little boy. Uh, yeah. uh, Kent, do you have any shout-outs? Do you have any shout-outs you'd like to give, Kent? Yeah, I love Kent. No shout-outs. Go ahead. 
No, 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 no. It's it's. Uh, if you have anybody that you'd like to shout out to tonight, Ken, uh, Ken. just say hello. Uh, oh, you're I just want to say love everybody. I took tonight off and found out my my friend. She's got co- or her parent or stepdad's got COVID, and they're going to uh-huh. quarantine. So I want to make a point to uh, be on the shows uh, tonight and uh, be around and try to call in. I missed your show, Aaron, but I had to run out for a while. But I came back and got up here with you guys here on the Uncle Show. And, uh, you know, of course, Jesse had to say what Jesse had to say. And hold on a second. Uh, yeah. Stone Cold's going to say what Stone Cold wants to say, and that's the bottom line. All right, cool, dude. All right, all so right. that's about it. <laughs> mm-hmm. Love everybody. Spent Kent mm-hmm. signing off. Okay. All right, thanks for being here. Thanks for being here, As always. Yeah. And then we also have Jimmy James. Jimmy uh, James? Jimmy, who you shouting out to tonight? Oh. Uh, Shout out to the greatest wrestler of all time, a gentleman and a scholar, the truly undeniable greatest wrestler. And of course, that's the Brooklyn Brawler. Shout out. (laughs) Brooklyn (laughs) Brawler. Of course it is. Good shout out. Class act. That's a Uh, class act. mm. Uncle, you got any shout outs? Um, I'm going to shout out to the... All the beef people. Fact, I had seen one as I walk into Smite tonight. I'm going to shout out to that fellow that he he was. He's a beef man riding around in his car. I saw him this uh, this evening. I'm going to shout out to them. Okay, cool. I'll shout out to the Honky Tonk Man. Why not? Sounds fun. The Honky Tonk. Yeah. What about your favorite wrestler? Okay. Why, tonight it's the honky tonk man. Oh well. <laughs> so I'm gonna go. also shout out to one other person. All right, Sting. That's a shout out to you. There we go. All he right. deserves that. All right. I deserve that. Note, bro. Well, that's the show for tonight. Thank you everybody for calling in. It was great that's to the talk show. to you all. Thank oh. you for listening, everybody listening. Who do we? Uh, we're at UncleThePodcast.com and also at UnclePodcast on Instagram and Twitter. Check those out. We're live every Friday night on Ocelli.com. Uncle, why don't you uh, bring us home right now? There's uh, 265 members. Bye-bye. Hope we have an 